Small Business Supply Co. is the hub for small business owners to connect and support one another while also being a one-stop shop for their small business supplies. They love the phrase community over competition, just like we do on the podcast, so they wanted to create a space to reflect that. Aside from their supportive small business community, they also have matching poly mailers, thank you cards, washi tape, stickers, envelopes, custom business cards, and more. Their designs are unique to them, and everything is created with an eco-friendly mindset. Yay! They also have a QR code in each package that will pull up their recycling page, giving you instructions on how to properly dispose of each item you receive. Each item was created with a small business owner in mind, meaning they sell in low, affordable quantities to maximize your profit margins. We all know the struggle of carrying armfuls of packages into the post office, but that is no more. They also sell giant tote bags perfect for carrying your packages in, which means less trips to the car for you. Are you intrigued yet? Head over to their Instagram and TikTok at Small Business Supply Co. Smelled Small Business S-P-L-Y Co. to shop all of their amazing products and follow their journey. Their business is truly a small business owner's dream. Cora B. Gallery has been making a name for herself in the South for her colorful and iconic portraits. Her pieces are all designed to not only show off the subject of the painting, but to also bring a beautiful and exciting piece of artwork into your home. Her new portrait series, Icons and Idols, showcases some of the most memorable faces in music. Each original portrait is hand-painted and designed to showcase their most iconic music and images. These paintings have the most famous faces in music, depicting everyone from Louis Armstrong and the Beatles to Billie Eilish and Beyonce. All of her portraits are also available in 8x8 inch art prints that make the perfect gift for the music lover in your life this Christmas. Use our code CYA15 at CoraBGallery.com for 15% off your first order. Again, that is code CYA15 at CoraBGallery.com for 15% off your first order. Every time. Every episode you do that. <laughs> okay, you ready? Are you ready? Did you stop recording and then start recording? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Hey guys, I'm Katie. And I'm Alexis, and this is the Check Yours Today podcast. Hello, Katie. Hi, an airplane just went by and then my dog was stretching. So <laughs> got, a little, <laughs> got a little distracted. <laughs> um, we haven't talked in a while, honestly. I know. And we also, um, we have some explaining to do because we have not had. <laughs> We've missed <laughs> two weeks in the two past weeks. three weeks. Um, we are so yes. sorry. We keep having like just bizarre technical difficulties or like people rescheduling yes, yeah. or mm-hmm. which like, of course, it's totally fine. Like yeah you know it is what it is but like we you know things just got a little crazy and then I adopted a dog so Mm -hmm. (laughs) yes things just went a little wild um yes but yeah so how have you been what's what's the vibes um you know it's been a lot I'm not gonna lie and I think that that's like partly why it's hard with the podcast and like Katie and I've talked about it too that like it, it's funny because like we don't spend like it's not like we work like 20 hours on the podcast a no. week yet it feels so like overwhelming sometimes and I think it's just because like we don't have a schedule for it so then yeah. like we're texting about it like, like a lot 10 p.m yeah like, like 10 p.m like emailing guests back. Yeah, yeah yeah emailing like dming planning stuff yeah and, and I like, think that's something that's hard about us being remote is that like we can't just like say like okay like Sit today but yeah, yeah yeah so it's definitely like um you know difficult but we apologize for not having episodes I know a couple of people have DM yes. me and been like my Mondays don't feel the same um it was it's definitely not our intention and we are um yeah. we've got a ton a ton a ton of yes. really fun guests yes. scheduled we are very scheduled out so yeah we're there will super, not be super a lack excited of content yeah and yeah. I think like especially when something does go wrong since we both have such busy schedules with grad school and with work and with just like everything and life it just makes it difficult to reschedule so yeah definitely um but yeah so I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of what's been going on I have been um 
doing midterms, which has been oh. bad, <laughs> straight up bad, just mm-hmm. not fun and bad. Um, I didn't really realize that midterms happened. Oh, she's so cute. Um, that midterms happened like in grad school. I don't really know mm-hmm. why, like sometimes I just forget I'm in school. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, I'm just doing this assignment. Yeah, for yeah, fun. I do that too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I have been doing that. Um, and then it's Halloween next week. And also you guys, also you guys, when you're listening to this, it's actually two days away from my Harry Styles concert. <laughs> wow. That and that's actually huge news. <laughs> that is a lot for you. I'm wow. like, I'm one week and one day out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my outfit came in. I, <laughs> I like actually like, I know it sounds so dumb, but like I've been waiting like two years for this. I'm just really excited. No, yeah. um, I understand. So I don't know. It just, it's just very fun and exciting. And then we've got Halloween. Um, have you been doing any fun spooky things, Alexis? Have you done any fun <laughs> spooky Halloween things? Absolutely not. Um, I, <laughs> I have literally been doing school every day, all day. I Yeah, it's misery here. <laughs> it, it's truly just horrible. <laughs> no, it really um, is. I have this project. I have this group project um, in one of my classes. And um, I have very mixed feelings about this. But um, first of all, almost like, I'd say 95% of this class is group work, which is like, it's really hard and remote. Yeah, it's it's really hard hard and with remote, but what makes it harder is that one of my team members is based in China. And so we have a 12 hour crazy difference. Yeah. And like, and then like another one of my group members like works full time. I don't really know what the girl in China, I don't know what her, um, her work schedule is like, but I know that we all work. And so it's just like, there's literally never a time that we can all work on stuff, um, which just makes it really hard. Um, and just, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm doing school literally all the time. And I, it was yeah. funny because Skylar, um, Skylar posted on, sorry, I'm outing your, um, your, uh, private story, Skylar, but she posted something about how, like, um, school is like taking over like her life or something mm-hmm. and then I was like girl oh my god like I like slid up and I was like girl oh my god and she was like yeah my like I feel like my business has to be on the back burner right now and I was like oh my business is like not even on the stove or like the counter right now like it's, it's in the cabinet <laughs> it's in the cabinet like yeah. there's no water in the like you know no. Uh, no. in the pot and so um she was laughing about that but yeah I don't know it's just it's just a lot and I feel guilty a lot of the time when I do think it's like this like drop like stomach dropping feeling when I think oh yeah I have this business (laughs) that I just don't do anything (laughs) for and it's it's like kind of embarrassing at times um but I know that like I know people get it and I know like grad school is obviously like the most important thing that I like need to focus on right now so Mm -hmm if right now things have to be like pushed aside um, and also work obviously, cause like I'm not getting, I mean, I am getting paid from my business, but like I'm not already being paid to do work that I'm then not doing, you know, yeah. like I need to, I need to do smarter stuff um, yeah. before I do my business. Um, but yeah. And then also um, I recently found out that um, I'm going to have to do a candidacy review for mm-hmm. my um thesis and which like I knew that I would have to like go in front of a board but I didn't realize it was like an entire class Mm -hmm. um so basically I had to make the decision of either if I wanted to still graduate in August I had to do in the spring I had to do my internship uh my candidacy review my second accounting class which if you guys remember my first one almost (laughs) killed me bad yeah, bad. And then Eat Smarter and then the podcast and then maybe business, but probably not if I can't do it now. Yeah. Um, and so that was what I would have to do if I was going to graduate in August. And then, um, and I really was like getting stressed because then I wanted the wedding to be in May of 2023. And then, um, and I wanted time to plan the wedding. And then basically my mom and I sat down and I realized like, something that my mom said that was really interesting was she's like, um, Alexis, like 
you have like three things that I know are very important to you are you like grad school and like maintaining your GPA, getting a good career and like getting a good footing with that and then planning your wedding. Why are you deciding to do all three of those things in the span of one year? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. Yeah. Um, so we've postponed the wedding. <laughs> um, yeah. It's not going to happen for a while. <laughs> um, we'll keep y'all updated on it, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I just kind of decided like, I care a lot more. I love Austin so much, but like we already live together. So yeah, it's, it's not like anything's not really changing. Difference. So um, I realized like I care a lot more about grad school and getting a good career than I do about getting married like soon. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's just a good point about like prioritizing things and realizing you can't mm-hmm. do everything at once. And actually that's a pretty good segue into um, this week's episode. We had Abby Aslan on. She's a content creator and um, she has podcast, YouTube channel, um, Instagram content, but she's also just got out of grad school and she um, is about to start a job at a, like an accounting firm. Um, she's taking her CPA exams right now. I don't know exactly what they're called, but she'll say it. Um, I probably couldn't know less in the world about my dog's actually acting insane. Um, I probably couldn't know less in the world about accounting, but we kind of just chatted with her about, um, balancing everything and like kind of finding your niche, but then also just like how to deal with things when everything gets really stressful. Cause obviously she's gone through a lot of change recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a really great episode. Um, so honestly, I don't really have anything important to say. What she I said have was- something to say that I just thought of. Um, Abby, if you're listening to this, I didn't think about this while we were still talking, but um, I'm going to have another accounting class in the spring. So gonna, if you want to help me out. If you want to help me. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. Um, yeah. But if, again, could not know less about that, but yeah, we will, we will spare you all of the yeah. updates that you don't care about um, mm-hmm. and we'll get to the good stuff. So enjoy this week's episode with Abby. Hi, Abby. How are you? Hi, I am great. How are you all doing today? Great. Thank thank you so much for coming on. Yes, we're so excited. I have- um, I'm super excited. I've watched your videos for a really long time, actually. That's such the coolest thing about having a podcast. I'm sure you feel the same way as like getting to talk to people that like you would probably never get it, like be able to talk to otherwise. Um, But for all of our listeners who are not familiar with you, tell us a little bit about yourself, your YouTube, your podcast, your grad school, your job, all all the good stuff that you're that you're involved in. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, first of all, thanks for, you know, being like a supporter, I guess, you know, it is really cool. It's like very full circle when this kind of stuff does happen. It's just yeah. like, wow, like, you know, we're just like friends, but then it's like, there is a backstory behind it, even though like sometimes it just doesn't even feel like that. But um, yeah, yeah, my name's Abby Aslan and um, I recently moved to Houston, Texas at the end of July and I'm from Panama City Beach, Florida, and I went to undergrad and grad school at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Um, I majored in accounting and finance, and then I did my one-year master's program in tax accounting, and then pretty much finished up in this last summer and moved to Houston, and I start a full-time job, a big four firm in tax accounting in January. So that's sort of like the, um, I guess, my life so far, but my the fun part, I guess, my content creation and like everything like that. Um, In March of next year, it'll be uh, five years, I believe, that I've been on YouTube. Um, And I recently just passed like my two-year podcast anniversary. My podcast is just called In Bloom Podcast. And I sort of created YouTube, um, or I didn't create YouTube, but (laughs) I created my YouTube channel (laughs) as a creative outlet, um, sort of just during a really lonely time in my life in my freshman year of college. It was something I just had in the back of my mind for a long period of time and um, really just dove into it when I was struggling with who I was and, um, you know, just figured it would be best to start it when I actually didn't know that many people around me um, because I didn't have to like deal with that fear of judgment, like judgment. showing up to high school and like yes. all those people around you be like, yep. you started a YouTube channel? Like, wow, what a weirdo. Like, yeah, here when you don't know anybody yeah. in your, in your mm-hmm. classes or anything. So I went ahead and just dove into that and it kind of, um, I was very fortunate and honestly, like I grew a ton in my first year and it's like been very stagnant since then, but I don't even like really like to, you know, pay too much attention to the numbers. Cause honestly, like I really like the tight knit feeling of yeah. like my, 
podcast. And so honestly, I kind of like how my YouTube has, because like, I mean, the growth was very exciting. And of course it allowed for many amazing opportunities that I'm very grateful for. But I think that um, overall, you know, it's just kind of nice when it's like, not this whole like, whoa, like, what do I even do now? Like, this is just too much. And it just remains like very close knit, like a family. And yeah, my podcast, um, it, yeah, like I said, it's in bloom podcast. It used to be called Gen Z girl podcast, but I kind of realized that being in that awkward year of Gen Z um, of 1998, it's kind of like, okay, I technically am Gen Z, but like I relate more to millennials. So yeah. I realized I was kind of <laughs> mismarketing my podcast to the wrong audience unintentionally because yeah. of the name. Um, so it's kind of getting, it wasn't getting to the people that I was wanting it to really get to. Mm-hmm. And um, so Katie helped me with that and with yes. the rebrand and everything. And it's incredible. It's like everything I could have ever dreamed of and more. And yeah, I've been doing that for about two years and I kind of just created that so that I could um, have a place to go like more in detail um, with the things I talked about on my YouTube channel. Cause I used to, you know, do a lot of those talking type of, you know, segments in my vlogs and I still do every now and then, but um, most people who go on YouTube, they want to watch something, you know, they don't want to watch you talk for like 10 minutes. So yeah. the podcast yeah. was perfect for that. And I think I, um, you know, I originally was a little nervous. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with this. Um, cause it is, I mean, it's a lot, you know, recording every week and everything and like planning good quality content every week. And, mm-hmm. um, when you're really busy getting in contact with guests can be really hard sometimes, yeah, um, working on busy schedules. So I was a little worried about it, but it's honestly been really great. And it's become like my little child that I just like want to like love and protect at all to cost. And mm-hmm. like, if anything has to go, like the podcast is not going anywhere. Yeah. Like this is fine. Right. Yeah. So, we, yeah. That's, yeah. We that's talk, pretty much everything. Yeah. We feel the same way about our podcast. We're like, it, everything else is, we love it, but like podcast is, is the best. And yeah, I definitely, yeah, yes. um, I definitely love what you said about like, the tight knit community. Cause I think people get caught up and a lot of our listeners are business owners or want to be content creators, kind of like in that realm, just creative women. And I think it's so easy to get caught up in numbers, whether it's money or followers or listens, but I think it like, I think you're a great example from like how, however long I've been watching you and listening to you and all that. Um, I think you have really engaged audience who like really is invested in you, which I think is awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I grew up on YouTube. I was <laughs> watching YouTube before anybody, like whenever, whatever you said about like bullying, I literally like straight up started a YouTube channel, did get bullied. And then I was like, right. I, have to, I gotta go, I gotta roll. Um, but I do this. <laughs> yeah. But I literally like these people on YouTube raised me like Claudia Saluski. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. the way she's dating Phineas. So I'm like, that's crazy. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah. But definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, it's so crazy. Um, I know I like used to when I would watch uh, YouTube when I was in like high school. Um, I think I started, I mean, I watched videos when I was in middle school, but it was more so related to like, I would watch like music videos, like yeah. lyrics over them, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was really big just into doing that. And then in high school, um, I don't know how, I remember I literally got like an Ulta gift card for Christmas, like when I was 14 mm-hmm. or 15 for my grandma. And I was like, what is Ulta? And so then I like, just being the little researcher, natural researcher that I am, I'm like searching on Pinterest, like top Ulta, whatever, or, mm-hmm. and then I think I went on YouTube too. And then I stumbled into like the makeup. <laughs> Ulta <laughs> hall. Oh, yeah, yes. everybody does. And I like <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> went into this giant rabbit hole. Oh, I'm like, it, that's, yep. that's what happened, you know? And then no. I ended up finding out that there were vloggers and I was oh, like, oh yeah, it's I would over. literally hide though. Like my computer, like I was like, <laughs> my friends can't know I watch YouTube. My family Same. cannot know I watch. I don't know why I was embarrassed of it, but I was oh, like, oh, I used to like, if people know, <laughs> if people saw me, like I didn't follow any influencers on Instagram for the longest time. Cause I was like, I do not <laughs> want anybody like Mac baby 07, (laughs) Bethany Moda, like, (laughs) yeah, I was like, I do not want anybody to know. Um, and then now they're like, it's, I mean, it's a whole industry. It's huge. So I think it's so crazy how that's like changed. Um, they've like transferred over to like the celebrity kind of literally territory, which is very interesting. Yeah. And Alexis, Alexis watches YouTube too, but she watches very different YouTube than me. She watches like literally like anti MLM videos. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which are actually really I have a friend like that too yeah it's yeah. just a niche but whenever yeah. I went to go visit her we were like watching him I was like oh I'm kind of hooked it's just like yeah a, it's very interesting it's that short form it's like it's long form content it's not as quick as TikTok but like still you're just cycling through yes it's addicting yeah, absolutely definitely mm-hmm. um okay so in the realm of kind of I guess podcast and YouTube and 
Instagram and stuff too. Um, how did you kind of grow into yourself as a content creator? Like you said, you've been doing it for a pretty long time. Um, and how did you kind of find the content that you love to share? I think a lot of people struggle with like finding their niche and that idea stresses people out a lot, but kind of what has been your, um, methods or how have you found kind of what you love to share? Yeah, I honestly, when I really like felt like I was, you know, getting that, that internal push to start like my YouTube channel, um, deep down, I just wanted to, you know, sort of just be like an online friend. And I think I've always had a passion, like my like probably strongest passion and goal in life is to just like help others fulfill like the best version of themselves. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, part of my like personality type is kind of like that seeing the good in others and like seeing what they are capable of, even if they can't see it themselves. Mm -hmm. And I really, really struggled with that for myself for a long time, but it's very interesting because through starting my YouTube channel, that's when, you know, I used to be a very low self-esteem, low self-confidence person. And Um, I started my YouTube channel and I think since I was so passionate about it and I experienced that like true real passion every day and creating content, um, I kind of grew into who I was. And in doing that, I realized how much I loved, you know, like seeing people for like what they're capable of and like really just encouraging them to go after that, you know, because we are our own biggest critic and I feel like we limit ourselves more than anybody else does. So sometimes you just need that friend to like, you know, remind you like, you are capable of this, even though you're telling yourself you're not, and you don't, I know you don't see it for yourself, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Um, Right. And I just really have always had a passion for like that kind of stuff. And honestly, the broad umbrella of that is helping others. But underneath that broad umbrella, it's like, you know, just self-development. It's, you know, fulfilling your passions and it's, you know, fulfilling yourself to your full potential. So that's kind of everything I've sort of sought after since the beginning. And that's not, I know that that, like, there's probably people out there who are very specific with that. Like everything they talk about has to do with like that self-development and like fulfilling your passion. But like, I like to keep it, you know, serious, but also fun, Mm -hmm. you know? So on my podcast, I do like fun episodes. Um, like when the seasons change, I'll do like my fall favorites or like my winter bucket list, like that kind of stuff, just to keep it lighthearted and fun. Um, and just more personable. And then of course, a lot of my episodes, you know, I will have guests on from time to time. And I try to like, um, get people on who are kind of growing into themselves as well. So people can Mm -hmm. sort of see that timeline of like, okay, you know, like I wanted to do this in high school, I went through this in college, and this is kind of what I'm going for now. And it kind of just from all different walks of life. So you can really see a range and not just like, you know, the specific type of person. And, and, um, So I think that's been really great. And I, um, you know, it's been an interesting journey, I think, growing into myself as a content creator, just because um, when I did start out, you know, I was a freshman in college. So I knew I had all this time in front of me uh, in college. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be a college YouTuber, I guess, because that's what my life is. And that's what I'm doing. And, um, you know, just helping people with like the everyday college stuff. I sort of had a ton of videos planned out. Um, before I even started filming videos so that I would just like have something to film every week. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of those videos are still very like, I think helpful and relevant. I would never, Applicable. yes. And I would never recommend them now just because they're probably cringy in my opinion. But <laughs> right. honestly, if you go back on my channel, I have like some very good, like I put a lot of time and effort into mm-hmm. like the planning of them and everything, just college type of videos, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, grow like little, like lower budget, like grocery hauls mm-hmm. and, um, I'm trying to think of other things I did. I almost transferred school. So like, just kind of like my thought, like Talking everything I did that. with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, it was great being a college YouTuber and I really, really loved it. But my last year in grad school, you know, I got really uh, burnt out on that content. And I was mm-hmm. just kind mm-hmm. of like, I accidentally pigeonholed myself and I didn't really mean to. Um, but the good thing about being in that lifestyle kind of segment, you're able to Transition. pivot with each life change yeah, yeah. so it's like yeah. I'm like okay it's okay that you know I pigeonhole myself because now I can just crawl out of it and I can yeah. you know Shift. carry on yeah. into the real world mm-hmm. yeah so yeah. um it'll be interesting to see you know how I sort of manage to keep up with everything um when I start mm-hmm. my full-time job but mm-hmm. you know I'm I'm very passionate about these things so it's you know not something that I plan to just like let go of and I'm definitely the type of person who's like if I have to outsource I will um, yeah, right. to get it all done keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yes and I think um you know I really appreciate 
like the podcasting space in terms of growing into myself as a content creator, because it sort of allowed me to dive into a part of my content that I felt like was sort of missing. Um, Mm -hmm. I know I mentioned Mm -hmm. earlier that I really did, I did talk about things in my videos at times, but um, having something that sort of forces me to get uncomfortable and be, be vulnerable with my emotions, because that's not something I normally enjoy doing and I'm not very good at it. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it really helps me create even more valuable content than what I would be doing if I was just on YouTube. Um, Yeah. Because just talking to a microphone, it's a little bit easier to be vulnerable for whatever reason than having a camera in front of my face. Right. Um, so, you know, I can be vulnerable, but I normally tend to like cut it off at a certain point in front of a yeah. camera. Whereas right. yeah. the microphone, I can really dive into that, um, like really get into like the self-development stuff by applying yep. like what I've personally struggled with. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's helped me grow a lot into myself and my content in that sense. Yeah. Well, I feel like, I feel like with podcasting, I mean, with YouTube too, but with just content in general, especially lifestyle, I feel like with that, how you said that it's kind of like transitioning through your life and you started it at, like you said, like a lonely point in your life. I think that that's so commendable because it just kind of shows young girls and guys too, that it's okay to like, not be in like the favorite, your favorite part of life at like when you start con like creating content because I think that's such a um like a thought that people have that oh if I'm going to become a content creator I have to show like the the highs of my life at all times so I think yeah great there's almost that perfection standard and you feel like you can't start until it's perfect in your mind but like that's not how it needs to be yeah it's never going to be perfect exactly and I feel like uh, like a lot of the influencers and I don't really like the word influencers kind of like content creator (laughs) better um but like all of the content creators that I follow um like you were mentioning like you're pigeonholing yourself and like all of that I think what I love so much is like especially people who are around my same age like you're one year older than me um and people like um like Brooke Michio and Danielle Carolyn that are like mm-hmm. around my same age. Um, like we're at the same point in my life, like in our lives um, and people who are, you know, really real. It's nice to just see like this person who I think like, who doesn't know I exist and that I've made like a large <laughs> part of my life. Um, like Kinsey Elizabeth is a great example. Um, mm-hmm. Even she, you know, is going through the same things that I'm going through. And I think that's like, I think we've, we've had content creators on the podcast before and like it just over and over again, people say like being real is so important. And I think it really is, especially with you, like you're saying, you want to help people and everything. And I think, um, that's such a great way to look at your content because I think it can be probably easy to get lost in like, Oh, I'm just filming what I'm doing. Like what? It, okay. Yeah, you know, like what's the point? Yeah. Kind yeah. Of. And I think having exactly. that deeper purpose of like showing people and especially you are a great example because you do all of this on the side and everything. Um, but you're also literally just went to grad school and now you've got this amazing job that you're about to start, um, showing people like that they can do all these kinds of things. Um, and especially like women working in like that kind of field, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Kind of rare, Yeah. And but. I think, um, and you know, I think like reminding myself and like, honestly, just anyone who either is in the content creation space that I wanted to get into it, you know, you're allowed to change and switch things up you know, it's your content and mm. you know, that's a big and important part of growth as a content creator. You know, if I want right. to grow as a person, I have to make changes. So if I want to grow right. as a content creator, I have to make changes. So right. it's kind of, that's kind of like my mindset with it is if I'm not happy with what I'm doing, you know, ask myself, why am I not happy? Like, what do I need to change? Am I still, you know, like serving that initial purpose of, you know, helping others like through what I'm doing in whatever way that looks like. And if I can address that and like check the box says yes, no, yes, no, I can really figure out like, okay, you know, where do I need to make changes so I can really help myself right. continue to grow into the best version of myself throughout this space. Yeah. I right. love that. Because you're not, go- you're not going to create like the best content that you can if you're not enjoying it. So exactly. I think it's, it's much better to transition. Um, so you talked about how you went to grad school and obviously you went to college when you started. Um, so that's a lot going on all at once, especially with YouTube and then podcasts and just like content creation overall. Um, so if for someone that has maybe a small business and goes to school or works or something and has a lot going on, um, how do you handle stress? And then also how you feel, um, you kind of get over that feeling of like, you're not doing enough and that um, you're not living up to maybe your own expectations that you set for yourself. Yeah, I think um, 
stress is just such a, I don't know. It's just one of those things that I feel like it's always kind of like floating around my head. I'm like, I'm okay. I'm like always stressed in like some area of my life in some (laughs) way or another. And, you know, I think when I was pretty much all throughout college, I would say up until it's sad that it took up until literally my one year of grad school to realize this. And honestly, I think part of it was because of the pandemic too, but um, it took up until that year to like realize that, you know, intentional self-care is so important. Um, Mm. You know, like sometimes we just like throw on a face mask and we're like, yeah, self-care. And like, yes, it is (laughs) self-care, but like, right. What you're not addressing like yeah. the core of what you need so it's like <laughs> yeah just because I throw on a face mask or I get myself like my favorite coffee I'm not really a, like listening to my body and like okay like what do I need right now exactly and I didn't learn how to do that until you know like my last year of college and um I really started to listen to that and you know like kind of try to always be in tune with like what my body was telling me it needed or like my yeah. mind and you know I think that asking myself each day at the start of day, you know, like, how am I going to take care of myself today? And, you know, sometimes it's like, it is like a voice like that, but then other times it's just like, I'm feeling a little like just wound up today. Like I'm just going to go outside and take a walk for a little Mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Like that kind of thing. And, you know, it looks different every day and that's the thing. It doesn't have to be this strict, like one hour long routine of this ritual. It can be something that takes five minutes one day and then something that takes, you know, an hour in your evening the next day. Yeah. And um, I really, you know, used to beat myself up so much over thinking I like wasn't getting a lot done. And, you know, I think- remembering like what you are getting done is like the easiest way to sort of get that thought out of your head. Um, Mm -hmm. Just like sitting down and you're asking yourself, okay, well, like what have I accomplished? And if not today, like say today I was having a horrible day and I like really truly hadn't gotten anything done. What did I get done last week? And Mm -hmm. then I can be like, wow, like Mm -hmm. I actually got all that done. And that kind of like boost your confidence a little to get you to attack your day and a different sort of mindset. And, you know, for me, stress, I think that the one thing that helps me manage it and kind of keep it out of, keep it at bay is honestly having a schedule. And Mm -hmm. that sounds just like not what anybody wants to hear. Cause it's like, of course, it's like what everybody does. It's science. Yes. But I truly, um, have found, which I'm taking like the CPA exam right now, which is like for certified public accountant, basically. And it's four parts. And most people, you know, try and get it done before they start their full-time job because who wants to work all day and then go home and study for these exams? Nobody. So I'm trying to take advantage of this time in between. It's like basically five and a half months and I'm trying to take four exams. And that's like a very short amount of time to take those. So I have to, you know, tell myself like, okay, I have to have some sort of schedule. So before I start studying for each one, you know, I have like a schedule in Google Docs. I mean, like, this is what I need to be doing or have done by like this date. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of plan out what do I need to do each day in order to reach that goal. And that really helps me sort of stay on track. And if I have a schedule, I will stick to it. And it's the same thing with um, content creating, Mm -hmm. you know, like, I know every Monday I'm uploading a podcast episode and that's in the back of my mind. So I'm not just going to not do it. it. You know, if I didn't (laughs) have a schedule for anything, I would literally get a fraction of the things I got done just because when you're doing things based off of feeling, you're not going to get near as much done because we're never going to feel like doing half the crap we need to do. So it's a lot better to sort of just have that schedule. And then the more and more like you stick to it each day, it becomes like part of your routine. So then like, your body gets used to it and your mind gets used to it. And even if it's something that sucks, like studying every day full time is not fun, like yeah. at all. And, you know, I know that it's not fun, but that's why I try to, to help like prevent myself from burning out and everything like that. Um, mm-hmm. Cause I used to get burnout, like really, really bad in college. And I just thought it was weird. Cause you know, I would hang out with friends and I would, you know, get a ton of work done and then I'd get all my YouTube stuff done. And I'd just be like, man, why am I so burnt out? Which I really was like stringing myself in like 80 different directions Mm -hmm. and wearing myself thin. But I realized that through all those first four years of college, you know, I wasn't really doing that intentional self-care and doing that one thing every day that just like sort of makes you happy or makes you feel better keeps Mm -hmm. you from burning out because you're not, you know, you have that little like fraction of your day to just like 
live for yourself, do something yeah. for yourself. And you're a lot less likely to feel that burnout as quickly, if at all. So, yeah. And, and I think I like what you said about like intentional self-care. And I think like, it's important to schedule that out too, because like making time for yourself in your day is just as important as making time for your work. I think, because if you like, yeah, you know, if you pushed all your studying back to like the last month and you were like, well, I'm just going to study 12 hours a day, um, every day for, you know, these, this month, like that's not going to be as productive. It's not going to be as like, honestly, especially with studying, like it's probably not going to work as well. Um, but with anything, like you're not going to be as productive, you're going to probably start to hate it. And especially if it's like content creation or like your business or something for our listeners, like you don't want to start to hate that. That's not good. (laughs) Or like resent it. So I think being purposeful about that's great. Um, but as far as like self-care, just for you personally, like what are some things that you think are really helpful for me? I'm like putting a face mask on actually stresses me out. Cause I have to like sit <laughs> and like <laughs> my hair has to be out of my face. But like, um, what are some things that you found really help you like mentally and physically to kind of de-stress? Yeah, I really, I know a lot of people, you know, say like movement is medicine and it really is, um, yeah. for me personally, it's, I've, I was like really involved in sports growing up and, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've been, I've had different sorts of, you know, fitness routines over the year, but I think the biggest thing is, you know, I did start to sort of resent doing certain types of movement because I was forcing myself to do them when it wasn't what I wanted to do. So, you know, accepting that if today, all I want to do is go on a walk, then I'm going to go on a walk. And if tomorrow I want to go to a spin class, I'll go to a spin class. So, you know, I really, really like movement because it's um, just a way for me to like remove myself from whatever is stressing me out. Um, I think, personally removing myself from what my environment, like me sitting at my desk every day, like this like little bubble that I'm sitting at right now is just inherently stressful for me yeah. because I know what it involves. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, you know, removing myself from this little bubble right here, even if it means going to my bed and, you know, watching like a comfort YouTuber for like 20 minutes before bed, yeah, yeah. Um, doing that. And cause a lot of times I used to, I mean, and I still do this. I pretty much just will have like stuff playing in the background and it's very passive. Yeah but like actually like sitting down and like watching this art that somebody created. Mm Yes. And like enjoying it and appreciating it. And, you know, I like to talk to friends and family on the phone. You know, sometimes I don't like to do that at all because honestly, I'm very introverted. So like, I, sometimes I'm just like, no, don't talk to me. Like (laughs) quiet. (laughs) Um, and I really like reading, um, especially if it's like something that can kind of like remove me from my life and I can just hone in on, yes, another story. Um, and I also really, this one's weird. Cause it's like, I've enjoyed baking and cooking in the past, but never like consistently. I'll just like get yeah. in the mood one day and I'm like, I'm going to bake some cookies and I'm going to make dinner. Yeah. And, um, lately I've just kind of had this mindset switch where I'm like, okay, I'm going to like romanticize cooking because I have to do it anyways. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, why not just make it into this whole like thing? And also it's time that I get to spend away from my desk. So I'm like, yep. yeah, I'm I excited totally to cook. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, just doing that. I've enjoyed, um, especially in like the fall and winter, like baking is in fact, cooking. Oh, just I trying new recipes yeah. and stuff. I yeah. Think. And that yeah. keeps it exciting. And I think Keeps that romanticizing things kind of, Oh, for sure. Romanticizing yeah. the little things like definitely helps a lot. Absolutely. And, you know, I just, I think that for me, like I try to have like one form of movement and even if it's literally a five or 10 minute walk, like it's mm-hmm. something. Right. Yeah. And, right. you know, just asking myself what I need that day. Cause truly it does look different every day. So, yeah. Right. And I think like a really good point that I noticed through like all of those things is that it's like, you're doing one thing at once, focusing on like one thing at once. And I think something that I fall into a lot um, that I'm sure a lot of people can relate to is whether it's like I'm doing school or work or whatever. Um, I'll like take a break, but I'm like just sitting at my desk, like on my phone, like scrolling on Instagram. Like that doesn't help anybody. No, (laughs) that's not helpful. And it's not productive. So I think like being purposeful about it. And like we, like you said, like Mm -hmm. intentional, um, and like taking some time to like, like you like focus on a YouTube video, like really watch it. Um, I am the absolute worst about like watching TV and then also being on my phone. Why? I hate that I do. (laughs) I hate it so much. And it's just like hideous. Cause then I'm not paying any attention to anything. I'm just like distracting myself from every single thing that's going on. Um, but I, I really think it's like important to give yourself time and like fully put yourself into, um, a task, which is I've been loving cooking recently too. I think it's cause Mm -hmm. like, I'm really bad at it. So I have to pay like a lot of attention (laughs) to what's going on, (laughs) but it's like, it's a nice way to focus and like do something with your hands, you know, and like make something. You have to eat anyways. So it's not like like a waste of time. Yeah. And Alexis, Alexis works for, um, like a recipe website. So she like has to cook like 
meals for work all the time. Weird, me- weird food <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yeah. It's weird so food. Then, yeah. Yeah. So um, then I send Kate, I send Katie the ones that I actually like. So yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what good. I've been, that's what I've been trying out recently, but yeah, yeah. definitely love that. Yeah. Um, okay. So just selfishly, me and Alexis are both in grad school. Um, we're in grad school online, so it's a little bit of a different situation, mm-hmm. but how has the transition been after grad school? Um, obviously you're studying right now, so it's kind of like interesting because you haven't, you know, started work and obviously you will. Um, but yeah. like kind of, I think a lot of people struggle with like losing the identity of like a student, mm-hmm. um, and like kind of what's been <laughs> like losing the, that like schedule and stuff. Yeah. So, so oh, yes. what's been like the most difficult part of it? And like, how's that transition been? Um, it's honestly something I'm, you know, still transitioning through since I really like left my college town in July. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm still working on it and I think it's going to be a work in progress for a while. It's honestly one of, one of the toughest things I've had to go through emotionally. Um, and I don't mean in the sense of like, I am like heartbroken and like sobbing my eyes out every day. Like you would be (laughs) after a breakup. It's not like that. It's like just this almost like a longing in your heart that just doesn't ever yes. leave and then it's mm-hmm. also just sort of this like looming like subtle sadness that's constantly in the back of your mind but it only makes itself known every now and then yeah um yeah. but it's always there and yes. I actually would talked about this a lot in my most recent podcast episode that literally went up yesterday and um also in like my last YouTube video because it's just something that you know I don't know why I was expecting this transition to be easy. Like everybody tells you it's hard. Mm -hmm. Um, But I will say my year of grad school, especially since I was physically there and I was at the same school I went to as I did for undergrad, I felt like I was, you know, straddling a line my entire year of grad school. I was like, okay, I'm still in college, but like I can feel, it almost like, I felt like I could just feel someone running behind me getting ready to push me out like mm-hmm. for the entire year of grad school so I was like I'm still here but like also I'm my time is running up <laughs> and yeah. like I'm about yeah. to leave mm-hmm. um so I could feel that and I really hated it because I just felt like I was in a transition already for a whole mm-hmm. year and I don't really like transition phases they made me Same, extremely I hate uncomfortable them. yeah it just yes. wears you out it's like just constant yes. yeah you're you're just tugging back and forth between two places and it's hard hard. but it's like two different realities almost yeah Yeah. exactly and you know it it's just hard because I think for me you know I haven't seen like a lot of my friends you know because obviously not all of your friends go to grad school so Mm -hmm. you know I got technically graduated well I did graduate in May 2020 with my undergrad and a lot of those friends you know, um, we left, we all left in March and never went back. So I haven't seen a lot of them since we graduated. And like, that was really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I made more friends in grad school and, you know, then we all moved to different areas. So I think one of the hardest things is like realizing that all of your like friends are not going to be in the same place at once. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even somebody that has like this extravagant friend group I just have a few really close friends that I made over the years and I was so used to them being a text away I'm like let's just go run the target or something and like now I'm like is anybody there like who do I (laughs) hang out with like yeah um so that's difficult and like you said like the loss of schedule and the identity of being a student um you know I said earlier how I like really struggled with burnout and everything and I think like kind of when I got into my senior year and like my year of grad school, I really like finally mastered like balancing everything and it just Mm -hmm. felt good to like have things under my control for once because I felt like I was all over the place prior to that. Yeah. And then as soon as I get it under control, it's like, boom, you're moving, like get out of here. Right, get out of here, yeah. 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 So that's hard. And yeah, I think the hardest part though is definitely like mourning the loss of a life that was once a reality that's now a memory and yeah like realizing like oh my gosh this is never going to like all these memories I have in my head and are still gonna be there mm-hmm. yeah like and it's never gonna be anything more than that and exactly. that's right. just like a really hard thing to come to terms with um and also personally I am a very I don't know I'm just a very emotional heavy person and yeah you know, I tie a lot of things to emotions, you know, like everybody does sounds, yeah. sense, like music, whatever it is seasons. And I think, um, something I mentioned in my podcast is like being in Houston, experiencing seasons changing right now, which they barely are. Cause it's basically like from hella hot summer to like <laughs> technically still summer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, just experiencing the seasons changing, it's kind of makes it settle in. That's like, Whoa, like I'm actually Life somewhere else right now. On. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard. And I think that, you know, the whole 
mourning the loss of like a life that you once like loved and lived and everything it is really difficult but I tend to only remember like all the good things oh, of yeah. college yeah. and mm-hmm. when I remember I'm like, wow, I had a miserable freshman year. So miserable that I, you know, tried to transfer schools Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I had to adjust and it took me pretty much a full two years to feel at home at my college. So I'm like, okay, here I am in a new city. Like, why am I expecting to feel at home within a month? Like, no, that's not going to happen. That's a good point. And, you know, I think it's just hard because it feels like my heart is in Tuscaloosa and at home and I'm just, and I'm physically over here. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I was that, waiting I, on that. I love that you talk about not liking your first year of college because my first year of college was like horrible. And mm-hmm. so I think that like college is so different for so many people. We've talked about it on the podcast, but I think just like not saying to people that are in their senior year of high school and being like, college is going to suck for you. Like, <laughs> that's not what I mean. Yeah. But like, I think just, yeah. <laughs> I felt so weird that like yeah. all these people around me were like loving it. And I was like, I hate this. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's really great that you talk about that. Yeah. And I feel like one of the hardest things about being in your twenties is that like, like you said, like we're going from like this really intense, like this is your whole life to switching that up. And then this is your whole life. And then you switch that up again. And then this is your whole life. And like, that's just the nature of being in your twenties. You're I mean, constantly teens and twenties, but like you're moving out of your parents' house and then you're in college and you want to make the most of that. So you fully immerse yourself in that, then that's gone. And then Mm -hmm. maybe you go to grad school. So you fully immerse yourself in that and then that's gone. And then you get this job and then, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe you stay there for a while, maybe you don't. And then that's gone. And then, yeah. And I've talked about this a bit on the podcast too, but I stayed in Birmingham. I went to college in Birmingham and then stayed in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And it does, it wouldn't matter if you were in Tuscaloosa. I don't think it would still feel funky. (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't quite matter if you stay in the same place um it just yeah. feels like you're like what's going on like right it's just really really weird and really hard um because like I had the same thing where it took me so long to get used to it and then all I do is I look back and I'm like well I wasted however long not even liking it and <laughs> yeah. then now I'm gone and I want to go back um <laughs> right. and then I think just especially after like college slash grad school um, depending on like where you stop your education, you're kind of like pushed into like bills, rent, like yeah. all this crazy stuff. Yes. that's like not fun. It's not like you're going yeah. into another fun stage of your life. It's like not fun. Um, right. so I think, I, yeah. And I think like being patient with yourself is really important too. Like you said, like Absolutely. you can't expect yourself to be used to it after a month or even two months. Um, and like with me, it's like getting a job and meeting my coworkers has helped a ton. Um, so mm-hmm. just kind of like trying to figure out and I think all of that plays into like just listening to yourself like we were talking about earlier. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, on a lighter note, let's do some <laughs> random questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we came up with some fun ones. Um, I The first one is just selfishly, I just need new TV shows to watch. Um, so it is, what is your favorite TV show right now? Abby, you can start. <laughs> um, mine is probably the morning show just because it just came back on um apple tv i need to watch that um, it's very it's that. produced i think i like it so much i mean i like it so much for a lot of reasons like it's mm-hmm. great acting it feels very real um and it's just produced really well like very high quality video like i like i love that oh, <laughs> so me too. much i appreciate me too. it yeah. um but i will say i don't like in season two, um, and really the whole show itself, it's kind of reflective of like actual and real life stuff. So season two does um, like the part, I'm a few weeks behind right now, but COVID is kind of hitting New York City and the episode I'm in right now. And I'm like, you know, I didn't really want to like relive all of this, but like, I love the show. So I guess I'm going to watch it. Right. Like, yeah. Whatever. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. And I also like Virgin River, which I, it's really slow starting out, but I kind of like got to like a good part of it and Mm -hmm. it's like a very cozy show so I just kind of like that show yeah I need to I've heard a lot about both of those shows um I'm loving my best friend recently introduced me to Ted Lasso and I think season two just came out of (laughs) Ted Lasso but that is just a great show it's just like fun it's just like you don't yeah. have to stress out about anything. It's just a good show, but it also has I some really good. That. Oh, it ha- it's so good. It has like good life lessons in it, but it's also like funny, but I think that mm-hmm. it's like the best balance in a show I've ever seen of like, you're not like, you might yeah. cry like one time, but like y- it, you don't feel like so sad. Um, I tried to start watching squid game last night and I was like, mm-hmm. uh, 
what <laughs> it's like <a> horrid <laughs> it's like so gruesome my boyfriend's watching it right now oh yeah. my god and then I also just watched the new season of you which is just I as horrid too. oh this yeah. one's crazy I-, I swear that they just sit down at the Ugh. like writing table and they're like what is the craziest thing <laughs> that you can come up with and then what about you and you and then we'll put it all into the season that's exactly what the show is like yeah. it literally it's just chaos but yeah I would say Ted Lasso if I'm making a recommendation is this is my favorite right now. Alexis. Yeah. Um, I am laughing because I, I think we actually talked about this in our last episode about Squid Game and neither of us had seen it. Um, <clears throat> but Austin and I um, watched all of it. And how many episodes have you seen of Squid Game? One and a half. Yeah, no. <laughs> you have to get to like the third or the fourth episode and then it's good because when, I mean, it was like good, but it was just kind of like gory. It wasn't really like, well, I'm like bored kind of right now. I'm, I'm no spoilers. It's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's spoiler not. alert. I'm at the point where they like leave the game. Yeah, yeah. So like that. I'm is sure they're going to go back <laughs> or yeah, else there's they, no show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty sure but, they go no, back. It's, it gets really, really good. And it's like, Boston said, it's like probably one of the best shows that he's ever seen. A lot of people are saying that. It's just like literally like 200 people die in one episode. And you're like, what? Oh yeah, no, it's definitely like, it's, it's a lot all at once. Um, yeah. but, and I never thought that I would say that, that I liked that, but as of right now, I would say that Squid Game is the most recent. Um, but okay, next question. What is <laughs> your favorite thing that you dressed up for Halloween as a kid? I bet you can start. Um, okay. I think Man, my, I, I like love, my mom has like so many like Halloween pictures from when I was little. Yeah. Um, I, I remember being Tinkerbell when I was like three or four. Oh, that's so cute. And I really, I like kept the wand from that costume probably until I was like 13. Like, I don't know why I was like emotionally <laughs> attached Fixated to it. on it. <laughs> um, yes. I don't know why, like just those random objects like that. Yeah. But I really liked um, that costume. And then one year my brother and I were, um, Boo and Sully from Monsters, Inc., oh, like so full good. on so like cute. costume. And those were both when I was very young. I honestly yeah. hated everything I did after I was like seven. Cause I was very lazy with Halloween. Like, cause I would do gymnastics and I would get home really yeah. late from gymnastics. And that was be like, dance. Hey, time to, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Time to go trick or treating. And I'm like, I'm going to be a gymnast for the fifth time in a row. Cause <laughs> I don't want to do anything. Right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am a big fan of the sibling family costume situation um and one time so I have two younger brothers and my mom dressed us up I was an LSU cheerleader um I'm from Baton Rouge so that was gotcha what's going on there um I know you're probably like "Hmm." Uh, Um, but yeah I am an LSU fan um but yeah so I was an LSU cheerleader and then my brother was an LSU football player and then the youngest brother was Mike the Tiger and it was just so cute I don't remember it I was so little but the pictures are just too cute like and I, that cheerleader costume for about <laughs> three years, that was all I would wear. Like there's right. so many pictures of me literally at school being like in my cheerleader costume. My <laughs> mom's like, costume. what are you doing? Um, I was obsessed with it. <laughs> I would show up at the LSU games and be like, I actually am a golden girl. So everybody needs to hold on, <laughs> hold the phone. But yeah, that was my favorite. Alexis, what about you? Um, I would say between two, one where I was a ladybug and I was like, I was a ladybug I, my first Halloween. Oh, so, so cute. cute. Um, but I am a very small person. So of course I was a very small child and just in that little ladybug costume, I was so small. But then I think probably my favorite picture um, was for my first Halloween and I was a mouse, I think. And I was sitting on my grandma's lap and I look so pissed and like it's just so funny because like my mom always jokes with me that like that was when she knew that it was going to be very interesting to raise me um, and yeah there, being, right so. there's a picture of me on Christmas and my mom's like showing me my gifts and I'm literally rolling my eyes <laughs> like she's like showing so it's like the book that she got me is in front of my face and I'm literally going oh my like, god Jesus like you a bitch. Um, anyway. <laughs> okay. Abby, do you want to go ahead and plug your stuff, your YouTube podcast, anything and tell people where they can find you? Yeah, for sure. My YouTube channel is just my name, Abby Aslan. Um, and my Instagram is Abby period Aslan. And my podcast is called and bloom podcast. And it's pretty much available anywhere that you can like listen to a podcast. Yeah. And we'll have, um, everything linked down in the show notes for you guys to go follow her. Definitely recommend. 
love your content. Um, thank you. But thank you guys for listening. Be sure to leave us a rating and review on wherever you listen to your podcasts and subscribe to keep up with our weekly episodes. And then follow us on TikTok at Check Your Aesthetic and over on Instagram at Check Your Aesthetic Podcast and our personal accounts uh, at Katie Creative Co, AlexisAdams.co, and at Abby.Aslin. And we will talk to you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for having me.